Okay, you guys, we're going to get started. There's good news and bad news. The good news is, um, in my opinion, it's usually downhill from here to some degree. Um, so that's good news. The bad news is we're still talking about probability, but it's done in a way that uh, we're going to look at probability formulas now. And I actually think it's a little bit easier than some of the other things that we've been doing, but you know, it's, that's an opinion. So let's go back and take a look at something that we did before, right? Do you guys remember what this is? What was this? Frequency distribution. Good. That's a frequency distribution. Is that right? OK. Oops, I shouldn't have wrote it there. Um, Fine. The question that was asked here was now, how many hours of sleep did you get last night? Is that right? Anybody get any sleep? <laughs> Good. How do you compute the relative frequencies? You guys remember how to do this? Add up the frequency. Let's do this for argument's sake, OK? Now, I, you don't do this in real life, but we're going to do it for the sake of time. I'm going to say, OK, let's say that 0.125 of us got no sleep. Let's say point what? Um, 315 has what? One hour. Nobody slept for two hours. Nobody slept for three. Slept for four, maybe point what? Oh, I don't know. One, seven, five. Slept for five hours. We'll put another point, uh, one, two, five. And so what should the six hours or more be? Anybody know? Because these relative frequencies should add up to 1. So what's the complement now? What do you guys get? What should this be? If I add these values, what do you guys have? You guys got to get your calculator. Add these values, 0 0.125, 0 0.315, 0 0.175. You guys going to make me do this? This is 0.3. This is 0.425. This is uh, 0.425 plus 0.315. 10, 2, 3, 4. Ah, 0 0.74, OK. So then this has to be point what? 2, 6, 0. OK. So this is a relative frequency table. And what we could have done is gathered data and then converted this to a relative frequency. The point is, this is what's known as real life probability. OK, this is real life probability. Because there's nothing inherent about you we can't look at, let's say, the bottom of your feet and say, ah, you're going to sleep for two hours. You're going to sleep for five. You're going to sleep for all these different hours. So this is what's called real life probability. Okay, it's a relative frequency. But the point is it's probability. So what we have to do is this. Um, let's note that what this means is 12.5% of the class had no sleep last night. Is that true? And 31.5% had only one hour. Nobody slept for two. Nobody slept for three. 17.5% slept for four. 12.5% slept for five. And about 26% slept for more than six hours. OK. Hey, yeah, you guys OK with that? About how to read this? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what's known as probability distributions. probability distribution, OK? Um, this actually is a probability distribution. And I'll show you how, but let me define a few things first. x is the list of all possible outcomes. OK? p of x. In ES, this is functional notation. 
It's functional notation, meaning that's p of x. Let's write it down. p of x. That's defined to be the probability of x. OK? Now, this is known as a random variable. Simply because, or ironically, it's really not random and it's not even a variable. Okay? X is simply a placeholder of values. It's a list of all possible values. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples here. In particular, X is the number of hours that people slept. Notice again, it's not random. It's not even a variable. All we're saying here is that X assumes the values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 or more. Because isn't this the list of all possible outcomes? Is that true? You guys okay with that? And in this relative frequency table, of course, p of x is that relative frequency, that probability. Okay, you guys okay with this? Good. So, how this works is in the following way. We first have to talk about notation. Okay, once we, get, once we master this idea of notation, we're going to go to the formulas. So if I write this down, the probability that x is 0, okay, you'll see this in your book, and it looks really confusing because you got this equal sign within a parenthesis, and you got this other equal sign. What this is really saying or thought of as is what is p of 0? Okay, p of 0. This is the probability of 0. What does x represent again? The number of hours that people slept. So if you say, oh, the probability that x is 0, what do you put here as an answer? What do you think? When x is 0, what's the probability? 0 0.125. OK. So what we're doing here is we're looking at how to read this table in terms of the probability notation. OK, you guys OK with that? You guys see how to read this? x is a list of outcomes. All these numbers are the outcomes. The probability of 0 is 0.125. What about this? What's the probability of 1? Meaning, what's the probability I select a student at random and that student slept for one hour? What are you guys going to say? 0. Point what? 315? You guys okay with that? What about the probability that I select a student and the student slept for two hours? Zero. What does that mean? <laughs> that the event is impossible. It means nobody slept for what? Two hours, right? Okay, what's, what's the probability that a student slept for three hours? What is it? Zero. Zero, good. What's the probability that a student slept for four hours? 0 0.175. Good. And the probability that a student slept for five hours? 0. Point what? 125. And the probability that a student slept for six or more hours? 0. Point 0.260. OK? So this is how this notation fills and works. Yes, I didn't write down every step of the way. What's the probability that x is 1? But it's, it's implied. What's the probability that x is 2? x is 3. It's implied. x is 4. x is 5. And x is 6 or more. So I just want to let people know that interchangeably, this is what it is. And so sometimes if you read in the book and you see these two equal signs, don't be discouraged because it's just notation. Okay. A lot of what we're doing here at this point is just simply learning the format to communicate. We're communicating. OK? 
Okay? And we're doing it in a way that everybody understands what that meaning is. Okay, it's a language here. Okay, you guys okay with that? Anybody have any questions on this uh, method of communication? By the way, this random variable is known as a discrete random variable. Discrete meaning that the values that x can assume this random variable are all what? Whole number, good. Whole numbers, nice. You don't have a 1.5, we don't have a 2.93. They're whole number values and they're finite, meaning that there's just a, a countable list of values. Okay? You guys okay with that? Is that easy or is that hard? Easy. You guys are still on spring break, I think, right? No? Okay. Let's. Let's talk about some more notation. What's the, what does this mean? What do you think this means? This is the probability that what? X is what? This is less than. Is that true? The probability that X is less than 2. So can you guys tell me which outcomes are less than 2? Is 0 less than 2? What else? Is 1 less than 2? What else? Is 2 less than 2? Is, two, is 3 less than 2? So in other words, the only outcomes that are less than 2 are the 0 and the what? The one. Is that true? You guys okay with that? Okay, so here, you remember how you had to take math 125 as a prerequisite? So you have to know what numbers are less than two. Okay? You guys see this word? What do you see here? Or, what does it mean? What, is it, what does or mean? You guys just had a test on that. What do you use to compute the or? Good. The addition rule. The probability that x is 0 plus the probability that x is 1. Is that right? The addition rule is happening here. Minus the probability that x is 0 and 1 at the same time. Now, what do you guys notice about this last probability? It's impossible, meaning that you cannot have that value of being 0 and 1 at the same time. This probability is 0. Right. I can't select a student at random and have that student sleep for both 0 and 1 hour. Is that true? That's a contradiction. So that event is impossible, meaning that the addition rule here to determine the probability that x is less than 2, the number of hours a student sleeps is less than 2, is simply p of 0 plus p of what? Plus p of 1. That's it. And so can you tell me what p of 0 was? Wasn't that point what? 1, 2, 5. Can you tell me what p of 1 is? 0.315. What happens when I add these values up? What do you get? 0 0.44. So ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. The probability that x is less than 2, meaning the number of hours students sleep less than 2, is 0.44. Okay? You guys okay with this? Is that easy or is that hard? You sure? Or is it rocket science? You might as well ask you to invent the what? The rocket. All right. Another example. What does this mean? Probability that x is what? Greater than or equal to 2. What's the difference now? Can you tell me which outcomes are greater than or equal to 2? Can you guys tell me? You, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me do a, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Not yet. <laughs> It's okay. You're allowed to burp. 
probably the x is less than or equal to 2. We want to do this one first. I'm sorry. Huh? What outcomes are less than or equal to 2? I think we should close this door. OK, so which outcomes are less than or equal to 2? <laughs> What's that? The 0, what else? Or the 1, what else? Ah, so we include the 2. Is that right? What does the addition rule say? Add these individual probabilities, and you're deducing the probability that x has a value that's less than or equal to 2. So what is that? How do we get that answer? Can you tell me what p of 0 is? 0 0.125 plus 0 0.315 plus, plus 0. Oh, it happens to be the what? Same answer only because it's a coincidence. It's actually because the p of 2 is 0. OK, but you would actually add that value if it were a non-zero value. OK, you guys OK with this? Any questions so far? All right. Let's note. You've actually done this before. We did this actually the first lecture. Do you guys know that? What's the language? Well, didn't we ask you percent questions? Right? So this is, you see this less, this is less than or what? Less than or equal to what number? To two. This is strictly a what? Less than two. Can you tell me? What if I asked you this question? How about the at least two? How do we represent at least two? Good. It's two or more. Is that right? In terms of the random variable x, you want x to be, what's the relationship between x and 2 now? Greater than or equal. Good. x is greater than or equal to 2. OK? Does it at least 2 mean 2 or more? OK, here we go. So if we have to determine the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2, or simply that the probability that a student has slept for at least two hours last night. What do you have to add? Tell me the outcomes that are at least two. Two, what else? Three, what else? Four, what else? Five, what else? The six plus. Is that true? And so, if I add p of two, plus p of 3, plus p of 4, plus p of 5, plus p of the 6 plus. Aren't I adding, I mean, didn't we do this before? Remember that? We're adding all these probabilities. We, we did this before. Aren't we adding all those values? So what happens when we add 0 plus 0? Because these are zeros here, right? 0 plus 0 plus, what's p of 4? Is that 0.175? P of 5. 125. P of 6. 0.26. So if I add all those probabilities together, like I did before, I could deduce the answer. So the probability that a student has slept for at least two hours is going to be what value? 0.56. And again, note, that's analogous to saying that 56% of the students slept for at least two hours. Anybody here, uh, did anybody here not sleep last night, get zero hours? You didn't sleep? You did? Who slept the longest? How long did you sleep? Oh, that's not the longest, is it? I think I slept more than six. 
How, much, how many hours did you sleep, Moshe? <laughs> exactly, eight or nine hours. Anyone else? You had eight hours? Not, who had nine? Anybody had more than nine? Okay. Um, what about this question? Example. Probability of at least one hour. Probability of at least one. How do you represent that at least one again? X is what in relation to one? X is what? Good. Greater than or equal to one. That's how you represent at least one here. So can you tell me which outcomes are greater than or equal to one? Which outcomes are greater than or equal to one? One, what else? Nope. Not zero. Two. Three. Four. Five. And what? Six plus. So if I add up all of those probabilities, I'm going to get my answer. Is that true? OK, you guys OK with that one? Well, how about this? Do you guys remember? What was the complement? We'll put a note here. Remember I said you want to know that the complement of at least one is which outcome? Good. So. The complement rule for probability is simply this relationship. The probability that, is, that a, a student slept for at least one hour is one minus the probability that the student slept for what? No hours, right? So here's what you want to recall. That this is, yes, x greater than or equal to 1. But how do I represent none hours? This is 0. Isn't that much nicer to compute? than having to add all of these probability values together? What do you think? Is that, am I right or wrong? Isn't that much that, would you rather, I don't know, would you rather add all of these values or would you rather use the complement rule? Complement rules, it's designed to help you, not hurt you. Okay, knowledge is designed to help you, it's not designed to hurt you. You may think, you may disagree, you may say, oh, no, this hurts. But if I told you, you know what? You can compute your probability on a test situation. Probably that x is greater than or equal to 1 is 1 minus p of 0. Believe me, I'll go back to this remark later on that doing this is going to save you a lot of time, energy, and pain. What's p of 0 over here? What's p of 0? 0.125. So what's 1 minus 0 0.125? Point, point what? 0.875. Is that right? Now, how easy was that to do? Wasn't that easy to subtract that value from the number 1 versus adding about 5 or 6 values here? Right? Wasn't that easier to do? Well, later on, what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to look at probability formulas. And if you had to answer in at least one question and you insisted on going about it this way, you're going to have to apply the formula one, two, three, four, five, six times and add those values compared to applying the formula only once and subtracting that value from one. Do you see the benefit? See what I'm saying? And that's what you want to get used to. That's why I tried to talk to you guys about the at least one last time and say, OK, you know, this is your best friend. It's going to be your best friend. If it's not already, <laughs> you got time to befriend it. Okay? Some of you guys, you don't like at least one because you don't, you don't like the language. Does anybody use here at least one in their everyday life? Or am I the only person? Do you use at least one? Maybe. <laughs> don't remember. Anybody here at least use at least one? You use at least one? When have you used it? <coughs> at work. All it, yes, you notice that you have to, around kids, you, you have to be what? Specific with kids. If you're not, 
Oh, forget it. They'll tie you up, leave you in the corner. You got to be specific. Okay, that's that same thing's happening here. Same exact thing's happening. Okay. All right. What about this? Ah, uh, example. Probability. Oh, you guys remember this sort of notation? What does this mean? You guys remember that? You guys hated that notation in Math 125. Is that true? Well, what does it mean? That x, the random variable, the number of hours that students have slept, right, is between 1 and what? 4. So that's what, that's what, that's what this is. This is the between 1 and 4 language. And remember, I think we said the first, the first week that we're gonna, this is inclusive here. Okay? So saying between 1 and 4 means include the 1, include the 4. So which outcomes are between 1 and 4 inclusive? P of what? P of 1, good. P of 2, good. P of 3, good. And P of what? 4. All of those outcomes are between 1 and 4. Does that make sense? I think this stuff is too easy. I had a student that once asked me, she said, you know, I don't like taking Math 125 because it's so hard. I have to solve these absolute value inequalities. And then she said, I heard, I heard statistics and probability is easier. I said, I think it is. But you have to recall, what does that mean between being 1 and 4? Isn't that P of 1, P of 2, P of 3, P of 4? So what are those probability values? What's P of 1? What does it say? 0 0.315. What's P of 2? 0. What's P of 3? What's P of 4? What is it? 0.175. OK. What's the probability of selecting a student that slept between 1 and 4 hours? What happens when you add these values? What do you get? Point what? For nine. Okay, so we talked about the less than situation, we talked about the at least situation, we talked about the between situation. Um, all those situations are going to come into play. Okay, you guys okay with that? Anybody have any questions on this notation part? Because all we did was go through notation, how to de de compute these probability values from a table. And recall what all of this language meant in relation to that random variable x. Yes? OK, good. 6 plus means that I've sort of grouped that, I've grouped this data. There's some people that slept for 7. There's some people that slept for 8, maybe 12. OK? I didn't list 10 or 12 different outcomes that way. This is the 6 plus, meaning you slept, some people slept for more than 6 hours. Okay, How many hours did you sleep? Seven. Seven. Guess where you'd live? They'd put, we'd put you in this what? This group, because you're 6 or more. See what I mean? Okay, Good. You guys okay with this? Is that too easy? Let me give you a definition here. Here's the definition. The definition of what's known as the expected value. A very important definition. We're going to talk about the expected value today. The expected value um, is also known as the long run average. The expectation. The mean. Okay. They're all the same things. And it's defined to be, and it has different symbols, different books. Um, mu, also known as E of X, expected value of the random variable X, that's defined to be the sum of X times P of X over all outcomes. 
this is a tattoo time, OK? Your expected value is a tattoo. You're going to be asked these questions definitely on the final on your next test. What's the expected value of the random variable? Expected value of x. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll read the, OK. What it says in red is the expected value, this formal definition of expected value, this is the formal definition. OK? But it's also known as, sort of loosely or informally, as the long run average. What happens in the long run? Um, or ex simply expectation. Some books would call it the expectation. Um, some books call it what's the mean. So all of these informal descriptions that we're using here is really the formal expected value. Formally, it's the expected value. Informally, they'll say, hey, what's the long run average? Or what's the expectation? OK? What's the mean? And notice it's no coincidence that it has that same mu symbol for mean. This is a functional notation, expected value of x, but it's the mean. It's all the same thing. OK? And I could go through a very simple scenario for you. I mean, I, I sort of debate this, because at this point, you know, we, we sort of running late. There's a lot of interruptions. And you know, I have to always balance how much detail do I give you. Um, there's trade-offs. So here's the idea. Let's go, let's see how we can use this definition, first of all. If I ask you this question, what is the expected number, the expected number of hours that students slept? last night. What you would simply do, the tip off that this is an expected value question, is this. It tells you. Okay. So what you would simply do is use this formula. OK, you guys with me on this? You're going to use this formula. What does this formula, what does this formula say? It says to add what? What am I going to add? I'm going to add the product of x and p of x. You see what I'm saying? Over every possible outcome. So I need an x p of x column. Let's go back. Do I have an x p of x column? Well, kind of. I have an x column. I have a p of x column. What I need is the product x with what? p of x. You see what I'm saying? This is a product here. What's under this, or what comes after the summation sign, is this piece of information. Meaning, I have to have these values, whatever they are, and add all of those values. So. I have x, I have p of x. What do I have to do now? Anybody know? What do I do now? What's 0 times 1.25? Anybody know? Right? I've got to take these two values, 0 times 0.125. What is that going to give me? Isn't that 0? What's 1 times 0.315? What is it? 0.315. What's 2 times 0? 3 times 0. 4 times 0.175. What happens when I multiply these two numbers? What do you guys get? Is it point what? 0.7? What's 5 times 0.125? Isn't that 0.625? And what's 6 times 0.260? Point what? A 1.56. So here's the story. I have deduced 
all the necessary values for this now, this summation. The all x means over all the outcomes. And we did that. We did that product for all outcomes. So now I have to add all those values. And what I get as an answer is the expected value, the long run average, or the mean. So what happens when you add these values? What happens when I add those values? What do you get? What is it? 3.2. OK. Yalzi says it's 3.2. In other words, what she's saying is that the mean, or the expected value we're going to call it, is 3.2. And what does that value represent? It's, re it's the average number of hours that that class, that group, has slept. This is the expected value. This is the mean. It's the long run average. OK? So it's just simply computing the mean here of that distribution. 3.2 hours. Okay? Anybody have any questions on that? Now, let me do this for you here. Let's think about this. Okay, this is the expected value, the long run average of 3.2. Do you think that has any value in your life? What do you think? Who likes to go to Vegas? Yowzdi, you really like Vegas? You sure? What do you, what do you like about Vegas? Oh, yeah. I don't even want to know. <laughs> I must be getting old. Because I really don't like going to Vegas. Do you guys know that? It's full of smoke. <laughs> Cough. Um, I'm not like Eddie, though. Eddie, Eddie loved Vegas so much, he used to live there. Is that right, Eddie? Eddie used to live there. This, okay. Well, what does it have to do with Vegas? And let's let's take a look at this. So Yowzi, what do you do when you're in Vegas? You gamble. Okay, good. You gamble. Let's just say that's all you do, right? She just gambles. Do you go to the buffets? That's the best part. Uh, what, do you guys, what do you guys notice about Vegas? Like, do you ever notice that you get or your drinks free? Don't you also have like a, even your breakfast subsidized in the sense that you can? I don't know if you've noticed some of the casinos would say a dollar a, a dollar for a shrimp cocktail. At least they used to say. I haven't been there in a while. Do you guys ever notice those signs? Or you have breakfast for like a buck? Guys, everybody ever notice that, or is it just me? Just I notice all the food. You guys notice all the what? I know why you guys. You go to these clubs, and maybe there's like some magic show happening during you know while everybody's dancing, right? You guys like, oh, look at the magic show. Look at the guy up there with you know pulling a rabbit out of his hat. You guys like that stuff. I used to notice just the food. Sorry. God, I could get a, I could have breakfast for a dollar, right, Eddie? You ever notice that? Because you, you live there. 99 cents, right? For like pancakes, eggs, bacon, everything. Orange juice. You can't beat it. Do you ever wonder how they, how they made their money? How could they afford to give you a pretty, pretty much a free breakfast and free drinks? How could they afford to do that? You're spending your money on gambling? <laughs> but. But wait a minute, you spend your money on gambling, but isn't it true that people are winning, right? Aren't people winning money? Anybody here ever won money in Las Vegas? How much did you win? Ooh. You, you what? I didn't know what I was doing, and then next to me, somebody called the, 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 the,
Did you win? Who's won the most money here? I've asked this question for every probability statistics class. I think the largest that I've gotten was somebody bought one like $6,000. They use it to buy a car to some degree. Anybody here uh, win, win more than that? Okay, so so far the record is about six grand somebody's won. Eddie, you see anybody win a lot more money than that? No? Okay, well, they got their pictures on the wall? Of the people that want money? Oh, they, they got to prove to people. You know what it is? It's motivation. Okay. Well, here's the deal. Here's what's going on. Okay, it's based on this simple idea. Have you ever even played a raffle? A raffle. How do raffles work? What are raffles designed to do? Make money for who? For the church. <laughs> for whoever is conducting the raffle to get into heaven, right? For the church. <laughs> That's true. They have raffles at church. Is that right? It's true. Right? But I remember raffles growing up playing sports. They always would raffle. Every Saturday there was a raffle. Okay, fine. Uh, how do they work? Maybe in a raffle situation, they're going to sell, oh, I don't know, let's say 200 tickets at a dollar per ticket. for a chance to win a bike or a DVD player or let's say 50 bucks. Back then it was uh, all you can eat at the snack bar. Okay? <laughs> all, the, all the horrible nachos, all the old hot dogs and soda you can eat that Saturday, that's what you'd win for the raffle. How much did that cost? Who knows? Okay? Who knows? You guys okay with that? So they're going to sell 200 tickets at a dollar per ticket for a chance to win 50 bucks. Okay, so what's happening with this raffle? Do you guys know? Well, what are the outcomes? Tell me what the outcomes are. What are the outcomes? That you can sit outside or in the next classroom. Okay. Okay. Okay, what are the outcomes for this raffle? Do you guys know? You can what, Moshe? You can either win or what? Is that true? You can either win or lose. Isn't that what the outcomes are here? Okay. Now tell me, let's talk about probability. Probability now. For this raffle, Remember how a raffle works? What do they do? What do they do for a raffle? You got, don't tell me you've just stood home and you never, what do you do? What do they do? They sell you tickets and then what? They put it in some container and then they, you know, they did, they, yeah, and then remember we, when we added students, we had a raffle. So when they select a ticket, the probability that you win, can you tell me? What's that probability? How many winning tickets are there? How many? There's only one winning ticket out of how many tickets? 200. So the probability that you win is 1 over 200. You guys see that there? There's one winning ticket out of the 200. Okay, you guys okay with that? Okay, good. Note. What's the probability you do not win? What's the probability you lose? Well, it's 1 minus 1 over 200. What is that? Notice, didn't I use the complement rule? Complement rule. So what's this going to be? 199 over 200. Let's write it down. 
So the probability that you do not win or that you lose is 199 over 200. Okay, you guys okay with that? Is that simple or is that hard? You guys just had a test on that. So you should say, ah, oh, easy, simple. All right, good. Now, here's the deal. Yes, I have outcomes like win and lose, right? The problem is I have to associate now a value for winning and a value for losing. So let's stop and think about this. If you play this game and you, let's do the lose first, and you lose, how much money did you lose? You lost what? A dollar. So I'm going to put losing a dollar being minus one. Minus one. A dollar was taken from your pocket. Okay? You subtracted a dollar from your pocket. Is that true? So that's going to be a negative value associated with losing. You subtract a dollar because it costs you a dollar. Isn't that right? Okay? Maybe you got five bucks in your pocket and you had to give one. So you subtracted one. Now let's stop and think about this raffle situation, right? If you win, how much do you really win? How much do you win? Wait a minute. They said you got a chance to win what? 50 bucks. So if you played this game and then they go, ah, here's your 50 bucks, how much did you really win? Good. I can't trick you guys. Did you guys take this course already? Oh, oh I thought it was me. Sorry. <laughs> All right. You just, you, it's okay. You can break my heart. It's not like it hasn't been done already, right, Eddie? Okay, it's not me. It's, you took it before. Well, okay. What's happening here is this. Yeah, they may have handed over $50, but stop and think. One of those dollars was what? Your own. Is that true? One of those dollars was your dollar. So you, even, even though you, they, gave you, they handed over $50, you are really up. $49. You see that there? You really want $49. You say, oh, I want 50 bucks. No. No, let's be specific here. You got $49. One of those dollars was your own. You guys okay with that? You guys okay with this? See what I'm saying? Because you're going to use this logic for those, val those problems. Okay? Now, here's the deal. You see what I just listed here? This is your x, and this is your P of what? X. If they ask you the question, what is the expected value for this game, what are you supposed to do? You're going to use your expected value definition. Okay? And what is that? What is the expected value definition? If I take x and I multiply it with p of x, I do this for every possible outcome. There's only two outcomes here. You either win or lose. So tell me, what is 49 times 1 over 200? Isn't that going to be 49 over what? 200. What is negative 1 times? 199 over 200. What's that going to be? Isn't that negative 199 over what? 200? So who can tell me, what do I do with these values now? What do I do? I add them. This is a what? Summation. Is that right? I add them. So who remembers how to add fractions? Isn't this going to be 49 over 200? Right? Plus a negative 199 over 200. What do you guys get? Negative 150 over? Can you guys tell me what that is as a decimal? What is that as, as a decimal? Negative point what? 75. Is that true? Negative 0 0.75. You guys know what this means? 
Isn't this negative? This is a negative expected value game. What that means is this. I know people win. I know people lose. One person wins, much more people lose. Is that right? But this is how you think of this concept of expected value, mean, long run average. In the long run, you can think of this game in the following way. Every person that plays is saying what to the people who hold the raffle? See that negative 75? They're saying, here's my 75 cents. Here's my 75 cents. Here's my 75 cents. Everybody who plays that game is simply donating what? 75 cents. That's the long run average. That's the expectation. See how that works? It's how you're thinking about this. Yes, one person wins and they get that amount of money. But much more people lose and they bring in much more money. So you can think of every person donating 75 cents to that raffle. Okay, and I'm going to say, well, what does this have to do with Las Vegas? Let's note. What does this do with Vegas? Every game in Las Vegas is a negative expected value game. Every game is a negative expected value game. Okay, so let's say, what's your favorite game? What is it? War? They have a war game in Las Vegas? <laughs> War? I don't know. Maybe you play the slots. If you're like me, I hate to tell you. Want you guys want to hear my gambling experience? All right. I played the nickel slots. It's not that I'm cheap. I'm not cheap. I just don't like to gamble. So I played the nickel slots. How much does it cost to play a nickel? I mean, how, it costs a nickel, right? <laughs> so it could be, although I haven't computed this, it could be that for the nickel slots, the expected value is what? Negative 0 .03. What does that mean? Every time I play the game, I'm saying what to Las Vegas? Here's my three pennies. Here's my three pennies. Here's my three pennies. Here's my three pennies. Maybe you don't like nickel slots. Maybe you play the what? You play the $5 slots? Ooh. Ouch. Just that one more. You got lucky. Huh? Ooh. $5 slots. I'm not saying that this is what it is. But maybe the expected value is minus what? Minus 4. What does that mean? Everybody that plays that $5 slots is saying what? Here's my $4, here's my $4, here's my $4. You see what I'm saying? And that's why you will always see in Vegas, or you'll always get the free drinks, the subsidized breakfast, maybe even depending on who you are, free, the free room. Okay? Because really what's happening is every time people play games, in the long run, it's thought, this expected value is negative for every game. They're just taking in revenue. Okay? Now, here's a note, or here's a fact. You can turn, you can turn negative expected value games into what's called positive expected value games. So here's the thing. A positive expected value game is simply an expected value that's what? It's not negative, it's what? Positive, I just want to note that, just to point this out. And how that works is, instead of you going to Vegas and saying, here's my money, here's my money, here's my money, the casino is saying <laughs> what to you? Here's your money, here's your money, here's your money, in other words, they're giving you money every single time you play the game. Okay? Now, 
I just got through telling you that in Vegas, every game is an expected value game. The answer is yes, that's true. However, from my memory, and I might be wrong, because you're telling me there's this other game called War, and I have no idea what that means. But the only game that I know of that you can take and play and turn into a positive expected value game is Blackjack. So you can play Blackjack. And if you have strategy, you just don't play. If you just play it with no strategy, negative expected value game. Here's my money. But if you have strategy, then what happens? You can turn that negative expected value game into a positive expected value game, meaning that the casino gives you money every time you play. Now, I hear, although I don't know much about it, I hear that. I forget, you know, because I really don't like to gamble. It's just not something I do. Okay, um, there's a famous book out. I forget the name and I even forget the author. It was written like maybe 30 years ago. And it was a book on how to win at blackjack. It's, it's based on counting cards. There's a certain strategy. You have that. What's, who's the author? You don't remember. Yes, there's, there's, it's an old book and they actually there's a newer version that came out. Somebody else wrote. People read. In fact, I think we started to talk about this. You know, MIT. MIT has what's known as their very famous blackjack club. Meaning these MIT math students decided, hey, let's read the book. Let's come up with a system and help each other because counting is, is, is hard to do. As you guys look at some of the things that we did, the combinations, permutations, all those are counting techniques. Counting is difficult. So there is a lot of different techniques that people use to count. Because you can't go up there with a calculator. You can't even take notes. But what people do is they invent systems of counting. They might put their hand in a certain angle and their drink in a certain position in creating some sort of counting system that tells them, OK, I know what's going on. If you do that, it's illegal. They could throw you out. You know. um, so what they're doing with this blackjack club is between like four or five or 10, I can't remember how many people. They were assisting this one person in counting and how they and how they want. And the, the I you know the whole there's a movie coming out about this. Came out already? Oh, I didn't even read. I didn't even. Really? I. When did it come out? Oh, last weekend. Huh. It's not that good. Oh, heard it was. Oh. Okay. Maybe we should make that your spring break extra credit assignment. <laughs> Go to go to twenty. Go watch the movie Twenty One and and uh, what I don't know. See, so you, you, no, don't write about it. I like the movie. It was interesting. No, no. <laughs> Give me your ticket. See what. We should have. Is that I? I sense a field trip coming on. Is that field trip? No. No. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Judge, he just took his class. To, you know, at nine a.m. No, what time did they? Oh, at eleven a.m. They all went to the movies. <laughs> they all went and, and um, seen 21. No, can't do that. But yeah, the claim was that they won millions of dollars. I don't think they even will tell you how much they won, but they did. Uh, somebody had some questions here. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, they assign a value to certain cards if you have a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a system. I never, like I said, I never bothered to read it. I never bothered to even care. I just don't, that stuff just, gambling doesn't interest me at all. Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, you can't, you can't, there's people who are banned from casinos. They can't, you can't, you can't go, you can't go, you can't count. It's illegal to count. You can't do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Eddie, isn't it? Eddie, Eddie's a resident of Vegas. I heard it was written somewhere. Ah. Yeah, you're counting. Oh, you, yeah, that's actually true. You know, Eddie, 
Eddie used to do is he used to service the the what? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's pause this for a second, Ed. Oh, okay. Then don't pause it. Um, yeah, Ed serviced the machines in when he was in Vegas. That's what he did. The the slot machines. And uh, so he gave people tips about what to do. And um, you claim that some people have, have followed those, that, those tips and they, uh, they said they won, right? Oh, sh don't mention names, Ed. You're going to have to bleep this. Boop. Eddie, you can't mention names. <laughs> yeah, but that's you. <laughs> we all know you're guilty. <laughs> You know, when something goes wrong around this school, you guys know who they blame? <laughs> they blame Eddie. <laughs> it's always Eddie. It's funny. Anything goes wrong, where's Eddie? <laughs> it was Eddie. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, so it's okay, Eddie, when it comes to you. We'll, we'll all blame you all the time. Um, yeah, I guess uh, you can turn, you know. Uh, I guess what was Eddie's strategy? He said, I forget. Should we say, Eddie? I forgot. You see, I'm not even interested at all in any gambling that I don't even care about the strategy. I'm never going to go do it, so. What's the strategy, Ed? Okay, I, I get you. All right, get you. <laughs> Eddie, you know, Eddie, uh, you never know that. Mafia might watch my videos. <laughs> and we may find Eddie somewhere in some lake or something. Because <laughs> he actually talked about it. Yeah, but Eddie, I shouldn't say. You ever notice how people look in Vegas? Do you notice how they look? Don't they look a little weird? They look weird to me. They look, there's something weird about them. They have like a funny look, like the people who are in Vegas. There's something weird about them. They look like. They do look dazed. They look like something, going through something. They're like, hmm. They don't look happy. Yeah, they look, they have like a jaded look. They have like a lack of energy. and They kind of look like they lose their, is it true that the workers there, Ed, are also gamblers too? Some of them? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I'll say this. I don't care if this is on tape. I don't care. Does anybody know? Yeah, I, I, this is serious stuff. Do you guys know what it's like? Maybe you guys know, because this is like really bad stuff. I've seen, I've seen it, so that's why I know. Does anybody know what it's like to live with a gambler? Yeah. I'm talking somebody who... Like the father, the main breadwinner, he's a gambler. What Eddie describes, gets paid, throws it all away, goes home with nothing. Yeah, the whole, their whole life is that way. Do you guys know how much damage that causes? That causes a lot of damage. I've seen, I've seen this. I've seen the damage. I've, no, not, well, kind of. My ex father in law? Oh. Ooh. Oh. He's a nice guy, but he had no self. The day he got paid, he's at the track. He's at the track the day he got paid. He comes home, and guess what? He got no money. You guys know how the family lives? They're all depressed. I have never seen a whole family that was depressed. Usually you got an uncle, an aunt, somebody there, oh, they got some problems. But I'm talking the whole family. It impacts everybody. It screws them all up. Yeah, I've seen it. I was like, ooh, it's like a dark side. Like, oh. Everybody's like kind of like messed up in some way. Could you imagine? 
Go, Dad got paid. We got, we're going to have something to eat, I guess. And he comes home and, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> sorry, you're, you're not eating today. Huh? <laughs> anyway, enough of this stuff. Enough of this stuff. Anybody know what I'm talking? Let's see. Just curious. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Anybody see it? Am I the only one? Okay. You've seen it? Oh. But he's is he like a father and or maybe it's a she. Ah, uh, but imagine if he was. Somebody was after him. Exactly. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Do I play? No. I won't even, I won't even, because I've seen that stuff too, I won't even go even, I won't even do that. The, that's what he plays, is the horses. He plays everything, but he's addicted to the horses. He goes to the track. That's sad. I've seen the effect. It's not good. Has to be similar to uh, an alcoholic father who drinks his paycheck away. You know, has to be similar, sort of. Anybody see that movie? You ever see that? You didn't see that movie? Oh, I remember. No. It was that Irish guy, McCourt. I think he was the author. I'll, I'll get it. It's a famous movie. Angela's Ashes. Angela's Ashes, same thing. <laughs> Sad. You talk, about, you talk about things that are sad? Oh. Watching those kids hungry and the wife go crazy and the guy, he just drinks his paycheck all. You can't, he gets paid, he's drinking. That happens. That even happens too, doesn't it? Nope. I don't drink much. <laughs> so I won't drink. Well, I drink some, but. Yeah. I already know. If I started, I'd probably be the worst one. Drinking and gambling. Okay, here's the deal. We're going to gamble. So you guys are nice and motivated. <laughs> nice and motivated to gamble. We're going to play a game. You guys are going to do this. I'm going to call this the, um, you're going to select three aces. It's called the three ace game. You're going to select three aces from a standard deck. Select three aces from a standard deck without replacement. Or how about this? There has to be three different aces so you know it's without replacement. All right, I'm going to say different. From a standard deck without replacement. OK? And this is how you win. It costs, oh, let's say $5 to play this game. For a chance at winning. Oh, let's say what? $500. Would you guys play that game for $500? You said it's only going to cost you five bucks. Would you play that game if it pays out 500 bucks? You might. What is the expected value? Okay, that's one scenario. And believe it or not, do you guys know? Anybody here buy life insurance? <laughs> you guys have some life insurance on you? <laughs> Should get some life insurance. At least enough to do what? Bury yourself. <laughs> okay? <laughs> At least that don't don't leave that burden on, you know, everyone else. You die and like, oh man, I gotta bury this person now. <laughs> okay? That's kind of sad. I don't want I don't want a car wash in my honor. 
I want somebody washing cars for, for Mr. Judge. <laughs> right, Eddie? If I go, I got life insurance. Just so Eddie knows, it's on tape. No car wash for me. All right, no car wash. <laughs> no raffle either. <laughs> life insurance. <laughs> Do you guys know that this is actually also true? The probability that a 26-year-old male lives to see 27 years of age is 0 0.92. I don't know, I mean, I don't know if that likelihood is true, but this is how this works. A, oh, I don't know, how much you want to buy? How much you guys, well, we don't want to pick some guy just in case. How much would you buy? Okay, I'm going to say 50 grand. A, 50,000, you're going to have some party, right? A $50,000 policy costs, oh, let's say, $2,000 for the year. Compute the expected value for this policy. So I'm giving you two examples here of expected value. And think about this. Now, I know we talked about one example where you win or lose. Is that right? Well, in this example, you can set it up similarly. You can win or you can lose. But think about what it means about winning and what it means about losing. Maybe you don't want to call it win and lose. Maybe you want to call it what? Live and what? No. <laughs> live and let's say not live. Okay, so we'll separate these problems. The outcome here, give you a hint. You can live, yay, and you can what? Not live. And then you have your probability. Same thing here, maybe your outcomes are going to be what? You're going to win, you're going to lose, but the point is, you compute the expected value, okay? So try that, see what you get. I'll give you some time to do it. You can pause now, Eddie. Here we go. Here we go. Let's stop and think about this. This, this game here, if you win, how much money do you win? How much do you win? 495, good. How much do you lose if you lose? You're out $5 and you make that negative. Okay, you guys okay with that? Now, how do you, how do you win this game? How do you win this game? This was a test question or a final exam question once. You guys know that? Well, I'm not going to tell you it's going to be. But I have given this, so we have to talk about this. You guys can answer that, that question. If, how do you win? No, how do, how do you win? You have to select what? You've got to select three aces. Is that true? So the probability, you select three aces. Hmm, didn't you have a test on this? Say, yeah, you were tested on it. OK, how do you compute the probability? That means the first has to be a what? Ace. And what else? The second has to be a what? Ace. And it means the third has to be a what? Ace. Is that true? OK, now, they have to be three different aces. So what does that mean? This is without replacement, but I actually, I actually indicated here as well. I don't have to, 
But if it's different, they have that's without replacement. Okay, you guys okay with that? So now, what's the probability of the first card's an ace? Four over fifty-two. Select reach in the bag. What's the probability of the next card's an ace? Three over. Good. And then two over fifty. What's this probability approximated to the nearest thousandths? Oh, yikes. <laughs> Is it? Anybody know? No, you might have done it right. What'd you guys get? 24 over what? 52 times 51. What is it? I got 132,600. Ooh. 24 divided by 132,600. Yikes. What is that? Zero point. Well, let's keep this for now. Let's keep this value, OK? So this is going to be 24 over 132,600. Who can tell me? If this is a probability that you win, what's the probability that you lose? This is where what comes into play. The probability you lose. Isn't that 1 minus the probability you win? Isn't this the complement rule now? See, this is what you even had that on a test, the complement rule. So 1 minus 24 over 132,600. What is that? Isn't that 132,600 uh, minus 24? I get 132,000. 576 over 132,600. 132,576 over 132,600. That is vital. This is how you deduce the probabilities. Is that true? OK, you guys OK with that? OK. So what do you do now? You need the x times the what? P of x column. 495 times 24 over 132,600. What is that going to be? OK. I'll do it for you. 495 times 24. I got 11,880 over. 132,600. And what is negative 5 times that number? Well, oops. 132,576. I get 662,880. It's negative divided by 132,600. So what do you do now with those numbers? You add them, is that right? So 11,808, so yeah, 11,880 minus 662,880. I get here negative 651,000 divided by 132,600. You guys know what I get? Negative 4.91 approximated to the nearest penny, the nearest tenths position. So here's the deal for this particular game. The expected value, or the long run average, is minus $4.91 for this game. So that every person that plays this game in Las Vegas or anywhere I know it costs five bucks to play, but you can think of it as, OK, here's my $4.91. 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 Here
Here's a four dollars and ninety-one cents. And so they're making money. Is that true? It's a negative expected value gain. Compare that to the life insurance situation. The life insurance situation works like this. If you die, I'm sorry, not live, how much, you, how much do you get or not get? Uh-oh. You rather do the other one? What if you live? What's, what value is associated with living? What happens if you live? If you live, you guys know how life insurance works? If you live, you're out how much money? $2,000. <laughs> you see how that works? If you live, you're out money. They don't give it back to you. If you do not live, what's the deal here? How much do you, do you not get or how much does your beneficiary get? $48,000. There's some assumptions here. They assume you live the year, whatever. So $48,000 is what your beneficiary would get for this policy. Is that true? You die, they get money. You live, you lose money. So what's the probability that you live? What is it? 0.92. How do they get this answer? Do you guys know? Do you guys know how do they get the, the probability value? They keep a relative frequency table. They'll look at previous years and say, ah, what's the likelihood that a 26-year-old male lives to C27? They go by a relative frequency table. Do you guys know that likelihood changes for females? It also changes depending upon the age. So they keep track of that information, mortality rates so that they compute the probability of you seeing the next year. Do you guys know that? That's how it works. In fact, they actually do much more. They have other factors in now. They'll factor in even not just your sex and your age. They'll factor in your lifestyle. What does that mean? They ask you questions. Do you smoke? Do you drink? They even come to your house. This is true. They take blood. They take blood, and they'll even measure your waist. Do you guys know that? They'll measure your, what else do they measure? They measure my neck, even. They have you stand on a scale. They take all those factors in, and the reason they do that is because now they're able to really get a more accurate value on the likelihood of you living to see the next year. Okay, you guys know that? That's what they're really doing. Okay, so the likelihood that you live is 0.92. What's the likelihood that you do not live, or the probability you do not live? How did you get that? It's the complement rule. See, I can't, go, I can't emphasize that enough. 0.08. You want to know what drives me crazy? When students can deduce this probability and this probability right here, that drives me crazy, but they can't get the other one. I, I don't know. It drives me nuts. You can do all the hard work to get this one, but God forbid, don't ever ask you to subtract it from one. <laughs> That's what it is, Eddie. You know that? They work so hard and they get, oh, they got this probability there. But then the other one, forget it. And all you have to do is subtract it from one. That's why I gave you, you guys notice on your test, didn't you have some compliment rule questions? Did you guys notice that? Yes. Okay, what's next? X times P of X. Okay, tell me, what is 0 0.92 times that negative 2,000? That's negative what? Point what? Is it negative, uh, negative 18? Oh, 1,800, okay. And 40? Oh, negative 18, okay. Okay, so then now tell me, What's that 0 0.08 of 48,000? 3,000? 800? And 40? So this is negative 1,840. This is positive 3,840. 
So, okay, what's the expected value? Expected value is 2,000. Now, is that a positive expected value or a negative expected value? Positive expected value. Okay, here you go. Is that true? Wait a minute. Something's bothering me here. Something's bothering me. Let me see these values. Can we verify these values? Yeah, let me double check. Okay, one, oh, 1,840, you're right. 48,000 times 0 0.08, 3,840. Is that true? Is that right? It's really weird. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Ah, just by, okay, it's coincidence. Okay, fine, all right. Here's the deal. This is how you see this, or view this policy. If you're the insurance company, right? What's the story here? Exactly. It's not a negative expected value. It's a positive expected value. So the insurance company is saying this to people who purchase this policy. Here's your $2,000, here's your $2,000, here's your $2,000. What do you think? Is that a bad policy? Well, it's bad for the insurance company because what's happening? They're giving money away. It's good for the person because they're getting money. Now, has anybody ever looked at some insurance companies, their buildings and all that stuff? They're pretty big. So what do you think is really happening? Just like Las Vegas, every policy is a what? A negative expected value. So if you said, okay, here's this policy, let it work this way, you want to know, what, you want to know what's going to happen? You're going to get fired. They're going to tell you, go back and adjust these numbers so that the expected value is not positive, but what? Negative, because they're in the business of making money, just like Vegas. Okay? You guys okay with that? But I wanted to give you an example of what could happen, and if you had to do that, then you're going to adjust certain things. Maybe the policy is not going to be $2,000. Uh, maybe the policy is going to be not fifty grand, but maybe they'll say make it a $10,000 policy or make it a $25,000 or whatever. Okay, see what I'm saying? Okay. Very good. All right, does anybody have any questions on this here? Is that easy or hard? Is that easy or is that hard? 